New Wave uh, Part 2. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Working Class Music. I'm one of your hosts, Jason. I'm Tia. And I'm one of your guests, Cody. Yeah, <laughs> and this is Part 2, Electric Boogaloo, Enter the Woodrow. So yeah, we're doing another UA effects pedal comparison to the actual amp. So again, thank you to Cody for providing this amp and you know, yeah. making this video possible. And thank you to Sweetwater for providing the pedal and making this possible. I just feel like I shouldn't be here at this point. <laughs> <laughs> so we have uh, a 1950 Tweed Deluxe sitting in the corner over there. It is the TV panel Tweed Deluxe. So it's the, it's the pre deluxe that I think a lot of us think about. The circuit is very, very similar. It's slightly different than like the later 50s or mid 50s Tweed Deluxe that um, I think this is probably trying to emulate, but they're gonna be very close. Here's a little bit about this pedal. Authentic end-to-end -end replication of one of the most iconic 12-inch Tweed combo amplifiers of the 50s. Three distinct boost options to bolster your bass Tweed tone. Three separate speaker cab mic options for a wide range of different tonal flavors. Three bonus cabs are provided when registering the Woodrow 55, as is with all their other pedals in the series. Room knob adds some air and ambience to your signal. Save and access presets using the right foot switch. Bluetooth compatibility for access to the Universal Audio app, which you can get on iOS or Android or even Mac OS, and I think Windows. So, on to the auditory delights. What's that? You're really gonna make me say it. On to the sound. Jazzmaster, parts caster, EP custom pickups, gun street wiring. This doesn't have the vintage uh, vibrato assembly, just the ABRI. So, yeah, that's it. I'm using a Strat, American Pro, all stock. Uh, I'm playing a parts caster. It's got. Um, a Seymour Duncan secret agent neck pickup under the pick guard. It's got an Avedisian bridge pickup, MJT body, Warmoth neck, and um, a Gun Street wiring harness in yeah, the body as well. Yeah. yeah. I feel left out. <laughs> <laughs> Being in the room with this is, wow. Yeah, it's wow. That's the word I can use, wow. This <laughs> sounds really awesome. Um... quick dad rock because I know this thing's gonna dad rock but it's got a great granddad <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. 
Mm. Well, like uh, Granddad was a surfer. Oh yeah. <laughs> He got me like wanting to play, I don't know, need Adderock. I don't know. What do old people like? <laughs> now you're getting into my territory. <laughs> no, nope. um, I don't know. No, that was it. Some of that, that was it. Yeah. Like, keep some of that. Let, 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 Thirsty grandpas out there. Yeah. I mean, it's actually, turn off the reaver. I want to. I want. I want Cody's chicken picking. Oh, uh, yeah. no reaver. I want Cody dry. Uh. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> If you guys will want to keep this or not. No, you don't want to keep that. Second, we try to remember that. This amp in particular is um, the closest thing that I can get to like the really old Merle Travis kind of stuff. So I guess I should probably play a Travis song, right? Yeah. Um, I feel the need to clap after that. <laughs> like, I'm, I quit. I quit. I'm out. I'm leaving the show now. Oh. Is this now working class Cody? Yeah, working class Cody. <laughs> or working Cody music. There we go. Ye old thoughts. Ye old thoughts and ye old first impressions. This is my first impression. And I think this is like the unsung hero of the bunch. Like I've been watching a bunch of YouTube reviews on this pedal and I don't think people are giving this one in particular enough credit. For me, I know what it's supposed to sound like, but hearing the amp and what it's supposed to sound like and being in the middle of the two, 
I don't know what the fuck UA is doing, but like, they dude, just, like, they, they nail these they toes. Tiny wizards in the pedals. It's actually yeah. not electronics. If you open it up, there's just a yeah. tiny little guy with a staff and, and hat. One, give give it another working stamp, whatever award. <laughs> you know, I, I'm just speechless because, like, I, I was expecting to be underwhelmed because a lot of the demos that I watched were not selling it enough because that you know everyone obviously wants a ac30 or a deluxe and i think this is overlooked i would say this more so nails the tone than the dream did of the deluxe just hearing both i think this is a more accurate portrayal of that however i am more of a deluxe guy but i think this is just the unsung hero of the bunch and it just sounds great that's my first impression of it like hearing this with the actual amp that it's based on i'm spoiled so it's just like holy shit like they did it again they did it again yeah like that's that's it that's all i can say about it it's 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 great first great first impression and just the variety of styles and hearing how it interacts especially like with the delay and the reverb if you like the tweed sound this is it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I agree with Jason. They did a really good job of recreating that tweed sound in a box. Personally, I don't know what order in which they were released. They all came in about yeah, the same time. time. So I feel like this is like the overlooked middle child, you know, yeah. like how everyone has a, a favorite kid between the first and like the last, but like middle child syndrome, don't ignore this one. <laughs> it does a really good job of nailing the tone that it's supposed to. And with like the different miking abilities, like it only took a few moments of turning some knobs right. to pretty much match the tone of the actual amp and that is super impressive like even when we started it was just flat fr from both and then from there we tweaked it and then we just dialed in that sound and that was just it so it's really cool to just have that and have the ability to save presets we didn't go through that because this isn't quite a deep dive it's really just an a b yeah. we try to keep it in its truest form comparison like cody said with the last episode if you're out gigging you're not really bringing two three nope. amps so this is just the easiest most, I don't want to say cost effective, but the most portable, I guess you could say, way to just nail that sound and just have it on your board, have it ready to go wherever. I would say the most true to life sound slash cost effectiveness. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Very nice way of putting it. Yeah. Cody? Well, um, I think you guys really covered most of the ground with that, but I guess two things. To kind of piggyback onto what you just said a little bit, that amp is not a gigging amp. Even, and that has really nothing to do with the age of it necessarily, or really the, I guess, value of it, but more the reliability of it. Before we started, I said, hey, okay, so when we finish with that amp, we're gonna cut it off and everything, because it's not really a, an amp that you're gonna have for like a, an hour and a half show or a three hour gig, whatever it is. The other thing that I think was really, really neat, and I don't know if this will make it into the video or not, was when we were dialing that pedal in, I got very nervous because a lot of modelers that try to do the Tweed Deluxe sound go right for the gain, right? Because everybody wants to drive the, the Tweed amps, whether it's the Champs or the Deluxes, and they have a great overdrive sound. But when we were first dialing this in, we, we kind of had it set on, on a high output. I got very nervous because I was like, oh no, this is not going to be good. And then a couple turns and it was pretty much matched. Yeah. And that's really cool because the clean on a, a Tweed Deluxe, I think is such a neat sound that most companies overlook in favor of trying to nail that drive. And I really want to hear the drive comparison, but the clean comparison is wild. Yeah. I agree, uh, yeah. yeah. Who is this for? If you are looking for something, a more portable option, I think that's the easier way of putting it. Yeah. A more portable option. And a reliable. Yeah, yeah. more portable, yeah. reliable option. This is for you, because in a recording environment, I think those would be, like, you can't tell the difference. Yeah. Well, and I'll say this too, and maybe this is something that's better left for another video, but when I record that amp, it has to be mics. You know, unlike the, the 64 Deluxe Reverb that we used in the last video where you can bypass the speaker and run something like an Oxbox or a Two Notes um, Captor X with impulse responses, you can't do that. The, that speaker's hardwired in there. That's the sound that it gets. And you know, when you're miking something like that, you are really kind of using a specific set of microphones and everything. Something like this for $399 into your audio interface, just that directly into the audio interface. Yeah, you've just avoided spending thousands of dollars on the amp, thousands of dollars on ribbon microphones and everything else in order to get that sound. Yeah, yeah, UA did it again. And 
I guess it's time to close this out. Thank you to Sweetwater for essentially, again, sponsoring this video and sending this out to us. There will be a part three with the Ruby and we gotta bring Cody back to that. <laughs> and please, if you're looking at any of these pedals or anything on Sweetwater, please just use our affiliate links. It helps us out a crap ton. And remember, we have Patreon as well. So, you know, that's one of the coolest ways you can support our channel and what we do. So, you know, because we love doing this. First and foremost, thank you for having me back. Uh, I had such a great time last time, and uh, this is, you know, really special because I was wanting to try this, and I knew that there was probably a slim chance that I was going to find this in a store anywhere right now, so I'm really excited to do this. But um, for anybody who's interested in uh, kind of the picking that I did, thumb style and country and Americana, I have a YouTube channel if you just uh, search for my name, Cody, C-O-D-Y, Young, spelled J-U-N-G, guitar. It should pull right up. But, um, you know, on that channel, I do gear demos and uh, playthroughs of songs, kind of like what I played here. And I also do interviews. And one thing that I forgot to highlight last time I was here is the interviews that I do um, are not the normal, tell me about your life, how did you get started playing guitar. Uh, the purpose of these interviews that I started doing for the channel is really about how to be a professional musician and what that life actually looks like. So I sit down with people who are, you know, session musicians and touring guitar players and performing artists and, and kind of everything in between and actually ask them like, hey, you're a session musician. How do royalties work? How do you actually get paid? Um, and just sort of all of that nuts and bolts of the business that sometimes gets glossed over for the more shiny tell us about your guitar and tell us about your first experience hearing music so that if you're interested in it even if you're not interested in country i hope that those interviews for anybody who wants to get more serious about their guitar playing the business side of things um hopefully it informs you guys so thank you again yeah we've been working class music with cody young thank you so much adios so the boys. <laughs>